All right, uh, my, Nico, my, my Nico my name Nico. is Neuke Power. <laughs> that's a very, you know, consistent message delivery. And I'm a product manager, and in previous life, I was a customer, so like some of you are. That's it. We'll let you. Nico. All let right, you. thank you so much. So let's start with the show. So, like a reminder, we have a couple of sessions through the conference. Consider attending some of those. And if you have um, you know, any questions, feel free to ask them at the end. We have so much content, exciting content, that we will um, postpone the questions until the end of the session. All right. Then, that's the agenda, but you will not care. So, you might ask yourself why max speed is actually needed, right? Have you ever met somebody who, want, uh, who did not need it, a faster performance for their database workloads? Who said they were more than satisfied, who didn't want it to be faster? So more and more customers actually are enjoying the benefits of this Azure Pass, and more customers are looking to migrate to Azure. And you know that there are significant differences between the hardware that you can get on-premises versus the publicly, generally available hardware that we have on cloud. Then existing customers, they are keep on asking that they need more performance and more flexibility for solving more complex business problems. And well, not a surprise, IO intensive workloads needs improvements on different scale. So, with all of that said, customers actually care about the price. Please raise your hand if your company does not care about the price you spend on your database workloads. Just checking, can't see. Okay, that's what is expected. That's why our team, Azure SQL Managed Instance, has been introducing very popular start stop option, faster provisioning, all of this stuff to allow customer actually to post um, and save money. Current service tier landscape. If you look, we have the famous two service tier. General purpose, which is great for the general workloads. If you are migrating to it, to managed instance, you should be considering with general purpose, right? Remote storage, remote blob storage, you have some IOPS, we have a built-in HA, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Actually, by the way, anybody can help me to guess which SQL Server Edition do we run on general purpose service tier? Which SQL Server Edition runs it? Because you have, you know, the basic, the standard, the developer, enterprise. I'll g yes. This gentleman said standard, and he's of course wrong. Any Azure SQL pass offering runs Enterprise Edition. Online operation, resource governance, all of it. So if you're migrating to it, you by default are getting better offer. If you're migrating from standard edition, we don't have standards. We just have the enterprise. And we have, if you want, to, if you need faster performance, we give, uh, we give you the business critical service tier. Business critical service tier gives you the only offer in pass that has a locally attached SSD meaning that we really give you the hardware that is not remotely connected. And we have the fully fledged synchronous availability groups with four replicas, blah, 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 all, all of the basic stuff. There, is, there are some certain resource limits. We govern, we throttle you on the consumption. You should know by now all of this. But what do you think? Is there a space for improvement between two of them? Like we have something general with something remote with not the latest IO generation. And then we have amazingly fast, but you get four replicas. We charge you, of course, for more than one replica, right? A little bit more. We don't charge you even for two replicas. But is there a space like something that would bring closer those two offers, because you want a faster IO speed and you want the benefits 
the cost benefits of the general purpose service tier. Anybody's interested? Just checking. A couple of people might be interesting. All right. So what do the customer need? More flexibility. And we have been keep on hearing from the customer these items one by one. We've been hammered, I would say, for the whole six years of SQL my existence. More flexibility. No longer per file configuration. Like, if, who, anybody runs the GP, the general purpose service here? How do you enjoy per file configuration? If you run in general purpose and you do not know that this is, you can go and find blogs by Nevena, by our colleague Jovan Popovich, by me, by anyone, which explains how you can get significantly faster speed by just resizing your file. Customers ask for more diversity in the CPU options. If you go from eight CPU V cores, the next option is double. Can you go a little bit higher? No, you can't, right? That's, that's a pain in the neck. Bigger CPU V core sizes. Some customers, it might be shocking to you, they say like 80 CPU V cores, well, we need more. Then higher IO performance, more IOPS. Is there anyone who has enough IOPS? Raise your hand. No, not really, all right? Then bigger max log rate. Lower latency, increased data throughput, and then more efficient storage configuration, of course, then more storage scalability, and higher database density. Any ISVs here? Anyone working, consulting ISVs? No? Okay. Um, what is the highest number of databases you place on a single SQL Server instance? Throw me a number. 88, oh, that's my favorite number, probably, I don't know. Anyone else? No? Okay, Okay. 88 is a good number. To run within the availability group, it's even more awesome, if you do not care about the failover time, of course. Anyway, so, and the uh, max storage per CPU vCore. So, like, let me throw you some of the current numbers of what we have. You might recognize the CPU, uh, v, we have eight CPU v core options, all of this. Latency, 500 megabytes, uh, megabits per uh, second throughput, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to recap it, actually, is by saying just two little things before I hand over to my colleague, Nevena. Asia Premium blobs that we use for general purpose, service zero, great. They're awesome, but there must be something else besides this. And we heard from the customers, we need more, we need more speed. Uh, basically, if you've been to the SQL Beats yesterday, you might have heard like the topic, I feel the need, the need for speed, right? And so you are at the right session, we have an answer for you. With that, I got speed, right? Okay, I'm taking over here. So first of all, I'm gonna just surprise you with a short demo. And this is a demo on Azure portal. So what I have here is I entered my SQL managed instance. This is a GP, so general purpose instance. As you can see, I can go all the way up to 64 B cores here because I'm memory optimized uh, cover series and I can go all the way up to um, 16 terabytes. 16 terabytes is the current limit. And um, once uh, you see this next gen general purpose preview, what it is like, it's, it's maybe your Godspeed that, that Nico suggested to you. So enabling it, what we got, we got many more click steps all the way up to 128. So 128 we course maximum. And what about st storage? Let's see, 32 terabytes. 32 terabyte storage, which is doubled than it used to be. And uh, here is another slider, maybe it's new to you. I mean, of course it's new, because it's new in the industry. It's a, it's a really uh, differentiator and uh, change maker. So IOPS. 
So what, what 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 does it mean? Like it means you can select the IOPS of your instance of your choice. If it's not enough for you, you can increase the storage, and then you're getting even more IOPS for increase. You can increase even more. Okay, so this was great, but let's uh, sum it up. So what does this uh, all mean? What happened? What we did to our general purpose, basically? We changed the whole storage layer. So the storage layer was using the premium uh, um, page blobs uh, for now, I mean, since today. And today, at the keynote, we released this next-gen general purpose, which is using managed disks. So premium managed disks to optimize the storage performance and scale. So it brought so many new capabilities and it unlocked new features, such as, let's start with this uh, storage model. So storage model, uh, Nico talked about the storage model profile that's currently, that was used in GP, all GP. But uh, what, what about today performance quotas? It's instance level, as you could see, you have a, you have a slider, which is an instant level, and uh, you, can, you can just pick IOPS of your choice. So what's next? Next is storage performance. So what about storage performance improvements? Uh, we have um, average latency that used to be five to 10 milliseconds. Now it's three to, to four, so even closer to BC. So we are at the middle now, uh, uh, middle way to the BC. Um, then max data IOPS, it used to be up to 50K, but now it's all the way up to 80K IOPS. And what about max log rate? We increased it by 60%, so it's 192 megabits per second. And if you maybe follow the BC improvements, this is actually matching BC now. So next thing, storage scalability. As I showed you, you can go all the way up to 32 terabytes. And uh, what about the, these uh, databases? You said 88, but basically you could make, uh, you could create up to 100 databases since today, but today we increased it not once, not twice, but five times. So you can basically merge five of your previous uh, MIs into one. And uh, the last, last of the storage scalability features, but not least, is definitely number of files. Number of files used to be limited to 280 per instance, but now it's more than 4K per database, and 500 databases, I mean, just multiply it. And uh, compute scalability, compute scalability is one more feature that we enhanced, and it's 128 v cores maximum now, instead of 80, even for the memory optimized that used to be limited to 64. And the number of v core sizes is doubled, so your choices are doubled. You don't have to jump from 8 to 60 now, you can, you can choose 10, you can choose 12, for instance and save up on your compute. And the last thing, IOPS. This is complete differentiator in the industry. So now you can just slide the slider of your IOPS and choose IOPS per instance that you wanna have. So what this brought? This brought uh, better performance, better price uh, per database, larger storage, improved recourse, improved log rate, etc. cetera. So, um, Basically, now we use the latest and greatest storage technology, and it brought us the, some best-in-class storage performance and scalability, and we're gonna talk about that. So what it means, performance quotas, as we said, per instance, no longer per file. This is now matching, this is now aligned uh, with other SQL offerings. And as, as we talked about the, the IO characteristics for general purpose, this is what, what you used to think about and do, uh, you used to bother with, basically. You had to tweak your files all the time. You had to increase them in order to get a better performance, but you don't have to worry about that anymore because now you have a storage model, you have performance quotas per instance, and now you can just use your slider and pick of your choice. The next thing, uh, storage performance. Storage performance in HEST, as I said, 60% more uh, of a max log rate. And this brought three to five better performance. Okay, I think I'm, I'm getting you bored with these numbers, so I'm gonna run a bit of a demos here. 
the, maybe some Hammer DB, TPCC, TPCH, maybe you'd like to see those. So I'm gonna start with TPCH then. I created here completely uh, same um, uh, number, completely same, okay, let's say same instances, GP on the left-hand side and on my right-hand side, uh, it is uh, GP v next, GP next gen. Um, and uh, I made sure that I use the same parameters I also make sure they are the same v-cores, so these are eight v-cores. It is the most common size, so that's why I chose it. Eight v-cores for GP, eight v-cores for GPV next. So I ran, I kick off the, um, I, I used one uh, one user, and I, I, yeah, I created one user, that's true. And I, I uh, ran the TPC age 10. So I think I'm gonna leave this to, you know, to, to run in the in the background, uh, and then we're gonna come back to see the results. And in the meantime, I'm gonna run the uh, the other test and see what about the transactions per second. So on, on my left hand side is again. I'm just. Oh, I'm not sure if this started. Sorry. Let me see if I can run it here. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, once again, uh, we are choosing GP and GPV2. You maybe see Hermes saying there, like, am I Hermes? And that was our code name for this uh, next gen GP. Uh, that was the actual creature that Nico showed you, that, uh, that one with the wings. So Godspeed, that's, that's how we called it. And uh, you can see that uh, as we kick off the, the actual workload, you, I mean, this is incomparable because here we didn't use, uh, we used the max possible uh, performance, the max possible IOPS for the for the GP, and uh, we just wanted to tell you what's the maximum we can get you, what's the uh, what's the best we can do. So even uh, so, if we let this run a bit more, we can see that uh, the difference in these numbers in the peaks. Look at the peaks. Peak for the GPV2 or next gen GP, 250K. 250K and what about the GP? 6K. I mean, is it even comparable? So um, uh, if this didn't blow your mind, I'm just gonna go back to this TPCH then to see what's going on with that. And This again stopped. I'm so. S Is it possible to. Sh okay. I think I'm gonna run it. I think I'm gonna open it again. Does it work? Okay. Let's see what's going on here. I think the left one didn't finish yet okay so GP didn't finish but the GPV next did so maybe we can is it yeah I don't know why it's just not detecting my um, okay okay leave GP to finish and then go look closer to the GPV next uh, what's going on there? One query set finished in 112 seconds. Okay, so this is TPCH 10. We use 10 just, you know, to make this uh, actual demo shorter. So what happened to the GP? It finished in the meantime, it's 330 seconds. So it's three times slower. That's what we uh, promised you, three to five times better performance. Okay, so let's do the, okay, let's go next. Uh, storage scalability, okay, we talked a bit about the storage. We said you have now 32 terabytes, which is twice as much as you used to have, and 500 dBs instead of 100 dBs, and uh, yeah, many, many more 
um, files per database and times 500 databases, many more files per instance. And do you know why the, do you actually know why the 100 databases was the issue earlier? Why, why, why was it the limitation? Was it like technical te limitation, theoretical or, a anybody? Sorry? Hmm, no, no, but you remember these uh, characteristics. Okay, this is not, this is just not working. It doesn't like me. I'm gonna use this, okay? Remember the IO characteristics of the service tier, of the GP service tier. Um, basically, each general purpose instance has up to 35 terabytes, it's a, it's a, uh, public knowledge. I mean, it's a uh, public information. It has up to 35 terabytes of storage reserved for Azure Premium Disks. So we used to use Azure Premium Disks and 35 storage and each database should be placed at, in one, at one disk. And even if you use the smallest one, just divide 35 terabytes by 129 gigabytes, you're gonna get 280. You're gonna get 280 files and uh, one database, it needs at least two files, right? One log file, one data file. So theoretically, we could place 140 databases on one instance. And we circle it down to 100 uh, because, uh, because uh, sometimes we have more, more per database, more files per database. So uh, yeah, so we were limited basically by the storage layer, but now when we use managed disks, now we increased it five times, and we don't plan to stop there. Um, okay, a bit of a demo again. So what I wanted to, to, to show you here is, have you ever seen these error messages? Have you ever seen the messages you reach the maximum number of databases, you reach 100 databases? Uh, well, that's, that's basically because you, uh, you only uh, could uh, create up to 100 databases on your GP. But once again, next gen is on the right hand side and you can see that we easily, I mean, we, we created 500 databases. You can see the object explorer that we have all of them listed. And now when you have more recourse, when you have uh, more uh, storage uh, per instance, now you can uh, cons uh, consolidate many instances into one, right? We even had in our private preview five managed instances consolida consolidated into one uh, MI and perfectly good, perfectly satisfied customers. So it was like huge win for us. Okay, let's go next. Uh, if I didn't blow your mind um, already, I'm just gonna leave it to my colleague to do. So, Urosh, please. Thanks, Nevena. So, the things that we sh that we seen so far that Nevena showed are um, things that uh, that have changed on the storage layer. But next gen GP also brings some changes on the compute layer. We saw the, the, the some limits, and uh, and now we'll do a, a short of a, a deep dive. So the powerful storage deserves powerful co compute as well. Uh, the maximum number of vCores uh, has been increased from uh, 80 to 128. So the, uh, the, max uh, the maximum that you can go uh, is, now, is now bigger, which brings to 60 more percent of CPU power uh, available for the, for the instances. Uh, again, uh, this was not the only improvement that uh, customers requested. Uh, as Nico mentioned, like eight click stops was not sufficient. You, you had to scale a lot uh, if, you, if you need more, more, more power. You, you don't always need the double amount of the, of the processing power uh, for your instance. Uh, so with new, new, new click stops introduced, we have two, uh, two X more V core flexibility. But the latest, in, uh, latest innovations comes only for the latest hardware. The standard series hardware does not have have this capability and it is scoped only for premium series and premium series memory optimized hardware. So today in SQL MI you have choice over the three, the standard premium series and premium series memory optimized that brings more memory per, the most memory uh, per, per record. 
So what's the what's the benefit of this? So when you turn on the next gen uh, GP, uh, you would immediately get the uh, ability to to use the new the new Vcore click stops. So for example, if you, you uh, if you are running on premium series with four Vcores, you get 28 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, let's say that you need 40. The next option for you would be eight Vcores. Uh, so RAM memory is uh, is uh, strictly attached to the Vcores, and you will get the 56. But that's not what you need, you need 40. Now with the new options, you can downscale. Uh, if you're an existing customer, if you're a customer that wants to migrate, uh, you can go to six and get like 40, 42 gigabytes of memory, which is, which is closest to your, to your requirements. And this is a tool that can help you to downscale or provision V course, uh, save uh, no matter if you over provision because of more requirement for processor power, for RAM memory, and you can save on V course cost, but also on license costs, since license costs, costs are attached to the to the to the vcores the next big thing as nevena mentioned the iops flexibility so uh, a lot of industries uh, and a lot of uh, our customers have a scenarios where they have some peak efficiency you don't have so you don't have the constant requirements for the performance over the time for example end of month processing uh, long running jobs uh, initial loadings of the data uh, peak season like tax seasons, then e-commerce, uh, e-commerce peak uh, peak moments like Black Friday, Cy uh, Cyber Monday, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Valentine's Day, uh, you name it. So at this at, at these moments, you need more 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 powerful uh, more more powerful server. Uh, Till now, the available options were like uh, changing the service tier, so going from GP to 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 BC. Uh, then change the hardware generation. For example, if you're on standard series, you switch to premium series, or you can scale the scale the vCores and and get more more vCores and memory. Now you have another option when you switch to next gen GP. Besides the additional click stops, you get the IOP slider that uh, that can help you to further tune uh, further tune your uh, your workloads. So as we can see, the slider has its limit. It has some minimal and maximal value. The, uh, that you can you can switch between. So how does it work? When you turn on your next gen GP, you immediately get some performance boost because you end up on a new storage layer. You get these per instance limits, not anymore per file, and everything that Nevena already already showed. So by simply switching to next gen GP, expectation and what you're getting is the better performance. How you get this? You you get certain amount of included IOPS for free. Uh, and this uh, amount of included IOPS is attached to the storage. So if you, for example, provision 256 gigabytes of reserve storage, you will get 600, uh, 768 IOPS included. So this is the baseline that uh, we are setting. Number of reserve storage multiplied with three, that is the amount of the IOPS that you get included. But then there is a, this maximum uh, number of IOPS that is attached to vCores. And in this example, the four vCores instance can go up to uh, 6.4K uh, IOPS. And these are the boundaries for your slider. So you can put it anywhere between those two, those two values. The number of maximum IOPS is, uh, is constrained by the size of the, of the virtual machine and the ma number of vCores attached. The formula for calculating is uh, number of vCores multiplied uh, with 1.6K, but you cannot go over uh, 80,000 uh, IOPS. So uh, when, you reach out the, uh, when you reach out the machine of 56 vCores, uh, anywhere, uh, uh, any machine above that will be kept at 80,000 uh, 80, IOPS. Uh, and uh, another thing uh, that also plays the role when it comes to the limits is the storage. So the storage size is also uh, slightly attached to the vCores. So when you are on 8 vCores machine, you can go up to 8 terabytes. On 16 vCores machine, 60 terabytes. And then 32 vCores machine, uh, 32 terabytes. When you reach out 32 vCores, that's the, that's the cap for, for the storage. You go to 56, you get to the cap for IOPS. And then you go to 128, uh, you get a uh, cap for the processing power. 
as we mentioned, this the change that is coming with NextGen GP is on the storage layer. On the very top, you can see Azure blobs that are used and still in use for the current general purpose uh, offering. But on the very bottom, there are Azure managed disks that, by its definition, from the documentation, are block level storage that uh, uh, block level storage volumes for Azure Azure VMs. So we repurposed the VMs powering SQL MI to be able to work with uh, with managed disks. So let, let's remind how high availability concept looks like for, uh, for NextGen GP. Some of you might uh, be present on the presentation yesterday, so, but uh, some of you might not. Let's repeat how it works. So general purpose service tier is based on the remote storage, opposite to the business critical that is based on the local storage where compute and, uh, and, and SSDs are, uh, are sitting on the same machine. Uh, there is networking layer consisting of load balancer and the gateways and database layer consisting of the VMs hosting the SQL server. And those gateways and, uh, and VMs hosting SQL are uh, forming uh, uh, are encapsulated in a service fabric cluster that ensures high availability. So you have one primary VM that is attached to the remote storage. So node talking with the remote storage, one for the data and log files and separate one for the, for the backup files. When there is some uh, issue, for example, hardware or software failure, the upgrade process, the scaling operation of your instance, the service fabric role is, uh, role is to keep your instance online until the last uh, moment of the operation called failover when connection is switched to the new primary node. So if there is issue with our primary, the pointers will be moved to another VM, so remote storage for both for data uh, log files and backup files will be reattached to the new storage. And then there, the failover will happen. And this is how high availability in general purpose service tier works. When it comes to the next gen GP, situation is the same. Just the disk that is used for data and log files is switched from premium page blobs to uh, premium uh, managed disks. So GP and next gen GP are actually the same architecture, just with different storage. Uh, since this is, the, uh, this is the public preview of the feature, there are some limitations that are in place. Uh, NextGen GP cannot be configured with zone redundant configuration, which is also recently released in the public preview form for current GP offering. And uh, no support for instance pools that recently got into the refreshed public preview with new, new, new set of capabilities. But we hope that everything will be ironed out until we reach out the GA state for all these, all these capabilities. So you can start today, NextGen GP is available. It is an online upgrade. So if you have your existing environments, you don't have to tear them down, spin up some new stuff. You can simply initiate the upgrade by toggle button on, uh, uh, or using the API. It will spin up the new identical compute. It will spin up the managed disk storage and see the data from the premium blobs to the new managed disks. Execute the failover to, to the new infrastructure and re uh, repoint uh, the, the backup storage account now to work with, with the new infrastructure and remove the old and, and unused, uh, unused compute. And you can start today and it is free. And why when we say it's free, is it really, is it really free? So it, i it is and it is not. It is because if you have GP that you're paying for and you upgrade to next gen GP, you won't get uh, your bills increased because it is uh, not a new service tier, it is an enhancement of existing service tier. So the same, uh, same compute, same storage price, sa same li license price and included IOPS uh, that we saw is coming the free of charge. And what is uh, not free? It is the additional IOPS. So the IOPS slider that you are moving has its own, uh, its own billing logic. And how it works, so additional IOPS price is equal to the storage price divided by three. So for example, if in one region, you pay for the storage uh, at the price of 0 0.115 per gigabyte per month, the amount, uh, uh, the additional IOPS that you pull on the slider will be charged for with 0 0.038 per IOPS uh, per month. And the IOPS can be increased with the increments of one. So there are no hops. Uh, it's the, the unit of one that you can use for, for scaling. Now, there are a lot of cost-saving options. We know that price is a sensitive topic. So all options that today apply for next-gen next GP, uh, for existing GP, apply to next-gen GP as well. 
so dev test subscriptions are uh, deployment type when uh, where when you deploy SQL manager instance you are not charged for the SQL for the SQL license and as Nico mentioned the type uh, of the of the SQL that you are running even on dev test subscription is the enterprise one then if you have reserved instance pricing, which is a concept where you pay for the compute upfront and you get a discount uh, price for it, it can be uh, one year based or, or three year based, also applies for the, for the next gen GP. And start stop capability that provides a uh, possibility to stop your instance when they're not in use, which is very useful for non-production environments where you can create like a working shifts through predefined schedules where your instance gets started and stopped at certain times during the day. Uh, also works for next gen GP. So in this example, if you deploy on dev test subscription, you get license costs cut, so you get significant discount. And then if you apply some start stop schedule, for example, like nine, nine hours during the day, uh, like around 20 working days in one month, that uh, further reduces uh, the cost of your managed instance. And if you have reserved instance pricing, then it uh, even uh, drills down the cost even lower, uh, going up to 87% of the, of the discount. And you can combine start-stop with all other benefits, as you can see on, on this slide. So interesting stuff uh, uh, can, can help with validating, creating your proof of concepts. But this is not all, because there is one more thing. Uh, recently released, and it's called Free SQL MI, when you, where you get a certain amount of vCores and storage free of charge for 12 months. The, uh, the, li uh, the limits are resetted, uh, resetted every month, and now the IOPS and NextGen GP are also part of Free SQL MI. So on certain subscriptions, you go to Create SQL MI, apply the free offer, and for the next 12 months, you get 750 vCore hours, 64 gigabytes of storage, and 300 uh, IOPS free of charge to create POCs, validate if it works for, uh, for your projects, and try out the SQL MI. After the validation, entering some extensive dev and test, you can switch to, to dev test subscriptions, uh, and then going into production, you can, you, you can leverage the, the benefit of reserved instance uh, pricing. So hope these were sufficient uh, motivators to, to try out, both performance-wise and cost-wise. And uh, this is uh, everything we had for today, and we are uh, willing to accept any questions that you might have regarding this. For the start, let us start with the online questions. Mm -hmm. No online question. <laughs> that was excessively clear. <laughs> you you outperformed today. Let's put it this way. Any questions from the audience? Uh, in the back, the gentleman. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a question. We got a client who recently upgraded to a uh, higher tier of MI uh, just because they have non-sufficient I.O. Uh, we have really OLDP application which is pumping the data every second. Uh, is there an option to downgrade to uh, general purpose tier again and to use the new capabilities? So th the question, let me repeat it to, 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 to make sure that we understand. Uh, correctly. So you have upgraded from general purpose to higher tier, meaning to business critical service tier. Yes. So the gentleman has upgraded his mm -hmm. uh, MI from GP to MI. Mm -hmm. Can he get down uh, to GP or yep. move to GPv2? Yep, I can take this one. So yeah, it is available. You can go from GP to BC, BC to GP, BC to next gen GP, so you can shift uh, and, and find the sweet spot that works for, for your workload. So there are, we do not have anything that would be like on the storage engine that would like a lock-in mode that the customer would, would try one of our service tiers and then no. would not be so able to So the operation will look the same. The new computer is spin up, the data is seeded in this case from, from local storage that is used for BC to the managed disk as the remote storage failover, so online operation. Feel free to try it out. Okay, great. More? Uh, behind you. <laughs> yes. Hey, hi. Um, yeah, thanks for this. This is this is brilliant. Um, is there any plans to upgrade the assessment tools and the SKU recommendations, uh, mm -hmm. the the advisors that you get in uh, Data Studio? 
Yeah, definitely. We're uh, working. Let's repeat the question. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, sure. Um, the the question was uh, whether we are planning to um, enhance to to improve the assessment tools, skill recommendations in particular. Uh, yeah, we are working uh, closely with the team, and uh, the next gen GPT will be included for sure in uh, in, in in recent future. Yeah, so in general, we tend to, to keep close collaboration with team working yep. on the assessment tools. So uh, sometimes the, 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 the new things that are coming arrive immediately into the assessment tools. Some of this will come later, but, but we are lately trying to keep the pace as much as possible to, to have all the latest innovation as part of the assessment. Awesome. Uh, hi, I was just wondering about the start-stop feature and whether any about cash... The start-stop feature. Start-stop. Start -stop. Uh -huh. start -stop. Uh -huh. um, is there any cash persisted through that at all, or uh, do you lose the cash if it starts stops? Hash, uh, the caching. Mm. So the the question, I, I, can, I think I can take this yeah, question. Yeah. So uh, the question is, uh, when we start stop the SQLMI on the general purpose uh, service tier, if we lose the cash or we are, uh, or it just suspends the billing. So. <sighs> I'll give you the answer probably easier to understand. What happens when you start for a stop a Azure SQL VM? It goes down, it basically, it shuts down. This is the same what we are doing with the underlying VMs for the start stop. But um, if you are interested in continuing this conversation, talk with me offline after this session. Okay. Give him just a subnet does not support the next gen um, general purpose tier. Mm -hmm. Please select a subnet that supports the next gen um, general purpose tier or create a new virtual network. It could what would be the reason for this error? You want me to pick up? Uh, yeah, yeah, what so, was the question? Just, uh, can you... the, the question was, uh, somebody online is trying to create or upgrade to uh, the, um, the next gen of GP, which we just announced and have shown, mm -hmm. and they have a narrow message saying that their virtual network is not ready mm -hmm. uh, for this upgrade. Okay. Okay, yeah, any, any new virtual network created will be, will be ready for next gen to be created on it. However, for the existing ones, it's rolling out. So it's rolling out region per region, and also um, it, it, it will come. I'm not sure what, uh, what, what region is in, per, in particular in, in place, but uh, um, yeah, uh, currently it's, uh, maybe you remember the November 22 wave that also rolled out uh, in, in stages, so yeah, that's how that's how the actual uh, deployment works. Yeah, so yeah. we let me just say mm -hmm. we we do care a great amount of about not disturbing your workloads because we we do the maintenance, we do the patching, as we already explained yesterday in our session, and to patch with a new generation, with a new code of an existing VNet, sometimes there are technical things that require us to take a little bit more time. If the customer is anxious to do an upgrade, what they can do, I can do a recommendation for a solution, is spin up a new virtual network, yeah. and then you can use the amazing database copy and move procedures that allows you to copy the databases from one instance to another in an online fashion. You don't have even to stop your business running. And that would be the easiest way, or as Nevin mentioned, they will have to wait until the virtual network will gain the capability. Yep. Urus, you want to add? It's, no. it's definitely going to be worldwidely um, um, enabled, because uh, our plans are to basically convert all GPs to, to next-gen GPs at once in, in future. So yeah, just... Uh, in a very safe way with yeah. customers getting a better offer. That's the goal. Yeah, as we said, this is all, this is only can enhance your performance, your experience, can only do better for you. So yeah, so it's gonna be worldwide. It's gonna be definitely our next 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 GP, as it says, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and new question. Will there be 
ZRS available for the new GA? If yes, when? Can you work? So when will there be ZRS oh. for the new mm -hmm. G yes. new GA? If yes, when? <laughs> I, I, let, let me just you know make an, an educated co uh, comment. I, we absolutely laugh when we are just starting the public preview. When will it be in GA? <laughs> so Nevin, you want to take this one? Um. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we do. Uh, we do. As I said, since we plan to to make this worldwide thing and to make this next, really next GP, and eventually deprecate today's GP. Uh, yes, we are going to possess the same capabilities as today's GP. So uh, it is going to come. We plan to, you know, come it once when we are G8. Uh, the, the question was, when is the G8? When is GA? Um, next calendar year. So Let's put it that way. ZRS. When yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned, okay. so like uh, ZRS is currently supported oh. in, in current GP offering okay. in, in public preview. We hope to see it in GA soon. Since next gen GP is going to be the replacement for it, it needs to have the full feature parity. So definitely ZRS for, for next gen GP is coming, is coming as well. It was announced just, what is it, like... Um, ZRS for uh, GP? Uh, no, yes, ZRS for is like in November. In November, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Three, we were talking ago. about four or five months, still close. We, up, we get the feedback, we appreciate it hugely, absolutely on our priority list to get all of the features working together. Definitely. More questions, more comments. <laughs> Future parity with, uh, with GP plus extra. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes. The creation time, currently it says six hours for MI. So uh, your question was, what is the current creation time for SQL MI? The, do you want to take this, or? Uh, are we? OK. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so current creation time is approximately around four hours in some, uh, uh, let's say, in some, uh, not call it edge cases, but uh, we are starting to decrease the, the, the creation time. And since I think uh, November, uh, we have this fast creation path where some uh, some most common scenarios, like four and eight week, for instance, is uh, we, uh, in, general, minutes. in general purpose are coming in 30 minutes. Uh, the, the scaling times and subsequent instance creations go up to 60. And then these uh, like special, special configurations, like multi-AZ, different maintenance windows are going up to four hours. But we are catching up. Like we, we set the new bar of 30 minutes, and then more and more scenarios are going to, to, to reach out this bar of 30 minutes that we are targeting to be. We're as, talking uh, about first. Well, no, I mean, also for also all for this is all, all second. So. I need just to give give a warning here. Like there are un, unlike the other services that are able to proclaim that they move faster than the speed of light, we are obliged by the laws of the nature to obey to the laws of the physics. Mm -hmm. So if you have 16 terabytes running on a business critical service tier and you are scaling let's say from 80 to 128 cpu v cores you need to realize this you run a synchronous availability groups it needs to seed 16 terabytes once twice three four times. times four times Actually, we will we will finalize the process before the fourth time when we have enough uh, quorum. But at least two sittings need to take place. So you need to transfer 32 terabytes of data to a new hardware. It will not work any other way if you do on VM. So there, depending on how many CPU V cores you've got, there will be the seeding time and not the hardware configuration or VM configuration time will be the true limit, which we will have to obey at any time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I mean, I would like us to do faster than the light speed. I will <laughs> just like, but we just max speed, not <laughs> faster than the light speed. We, we get in somewhere. Maybe once in the future. Hi, yeah, just to double check. Um, the plan is to upgrade uh, all of the um, general purpose to this new version without us doing anything over time. Yes. Yep. Yep. 
that's the next gen GP. <laughs> so once we are in GA, the customers, like, it is like my colleague said so well, there are no reasons, there are no scenarios really yeah. where customers will get the slower speed. There's Anybody, no downside. There are <laughs> so. no downsides on the new. So anybody use the uh, SQL Server 2014? Do you still remember when we, Microsoft, we introduced the feature of putting a, um, a file group on a remote blob storage? Yeah, some people are laughing. I don't know why. So what am I, initial MI design was, largely is doing that. So explaining in this plain terms, we moved you from a remote HTTP-based remote storage into VM-like managed disks. Would you like to stay? <laughs> I, would, I, I would say customers, would, there, there are no reasons to do that. So. Yeah, we always make sure to keep up to date with, um, with technical advances. Uh, that, that's what's happening, you know, um, with um, harder generations as well. So we are upgrading you all the time. As we as we receive the new ones, we are deprecating the, the the old ones. We are just you know advancing, we're keeping up to date. We don't want to lose our customers. We want to keep them. Like it's it's not just winning them over. It's just like keeping them as well. More questions or is it coffee time? <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you guys <laughs> in the other room. Hope it's not in the recording. Thank you so much. Have thank a great, you everybody for for the questions. It was, it was really a pleasure. Thank you.